Sup, Gloomer? So, if you weren't aware, at Origins, we had Sun and Lightning. The thumbnail and this was an indicator. We're going to be talking about those classes exclusively with spoilers. So, this is your time to kit and caboodle out of here if you're like, I don't want spoilers. If you go beyond this point, there will be no mercy. I'm not, I will mock you if you complain. The Sunkeeper and the Berserker. Some people are like, hey, these cards look new, and I got to post some of them on Discord. But some are like, are, are you gonna do a video on those two classes that for the cards we saw at RPG? Are they like the same? Yeah, there's like tiny, tiny changes just to adjust it for the RPG. So instead, how about we talk about the cards for level one Sunkeeper and level one Berserker? Hey, if you want to be kept up to everything Gloomhaven, um, to, from the RPG to second edition to Frosthaven, be sure to subscribe. And if you really want to support the channel, be sure to subscribe to our Patreon. It really helps out. And hit like, please. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, we're going to talk about the level one Sunkeeper. If you want to hit, uh, hit, skip ahead to the Berserker, please go to the section. I'm going to give you a moment now. All right, Sunkeeper. So uh, let's just talk about the cards. I know that there's a lot... Uh, we're eventually going to have a over full overview on these classes, but let's just go over the level 1 cards so we don't have access to the perks. Because if you weren't aware, the RPG system kind of modifies how it handles that, and uh, that was not visible. First, Hammer Blow. Uh, instead of an attack 4, it's now an attack 3 with Muddle, but it still has Consume the Light for plus 1 attack and advantage. Plus 1 Light, uh, Consume Light for plus 1 attack, advantage, and 1 experience is going to be a common theme in the Sun Keeper. You're like, but... But that's like the same as it was in first edition. Yeah, it was. Also, the Sunkeeper still has an 11 hand size. You're just gonna notice that change. Uh, the 55 initiative is still garbage! But like, you know, the the attack, turning this into an attack four muddle uh, with one experience is good. Now, the only real difference is it has one less attack and it muddles now. It's still fine. The bottom on the other hand, bless self loot really good uh, honestly the other loot in first edition it was lay on hands which just was a crappy loot honestly it's hard to use it and the, i, I it's really hard to loot as a sun keeper i just basically stood on stuff and tried to do it was just really annoying so i'm glad we have a much better one now and it also shuffles a crit into your deck now which is great holy strike some people are like hey that's not a stun somebody's like hey that's not a stun why is holy strike not a stun that's different uh yeah yeah, it is. Sorry. Don't worry, we kept the stun. We just put it on the other half of defensive stance. So good luck picking one of those. So attack three, pierce one, or attack four, pierce one, advantage and experience. You obviously are going to want to play this with the light. Again, if the wasn't very obvious, the light theme is really heavy on this. So you need light to really play this class effectively, just like it was before. Uh, but now this is instead of attack five with advantage, it's attack four with advantage and pierce one. So against shielded enemies, this one hasn't even lost any attack attack assuming you're stealing the top of defensive stance from this uh, at this point though initiative 65 again is not great but you have an attack five at range three on bottom which is huge um i mean obviously holy strike already had a good ranged attack on the bottom four but this also gives you two experience and infuses light because this gives you a significant attack at good range and gives you light this is a pretty good setup for other things later especially for later turn burst or if you just need um there's definitely some of the scenarios where like you only last 11 or 10 rounds or sometimes 12 and you just need some burst damage this is that burst damage and it gives you the element you want of course it's on one of your best attacks so you may not want to burst it out immediately so you could save it empowering command so this is where we start to get into uh the we, we actually saw in the demo some people play the sun keeper as either a tank or as a damage dealer or as a healer like straight up like some one character was just playing up like a cleric where he's healing and blessing and doing all sorts and it was so cool to see someone play a sun keeper in a different role that's just fun so here's the start of it uh pick your favorite friend and being like hey uh you're gonna have strengthen and we're gonna shuffle another crit in your deck just bless and strengthen that's just super fun it feels very um a buffy like not like vampire slayer i mean i guess you could slay vampire i don't think this game has vampires but being able to buff your friends is super cool and ultimately it's great and it infuses light so you can use that on a later turn non-lost light infusion with some uh potential for damage is good but also the bottom is grant an adjacent ally and attack three so if you have like a formation set up where you're adjacent to this this you can give free attacks out ultimately this is better than like the a lot of times the attack two with some 
potential writers on it as the be- the uh, normal like default attack uh, in second edition. But this is you need a friend next to you, and they need to be next to an enemy. But it's a three instead of a two, so a little bit higher. Some people, are like, but the old version. Shh, forget what the old Sunkeeper did, because those numbers were too high. Seriously, like the old Sunkeeper wasn't necessarily broken in most places. There was one unnecessary pip and the numbers were too high as well as like it felt really narrow in focus. So it needed a like broadening of the stroke and then like the numbers brought down. So if something like that looks like that, that's the numbers lower. Yeah, that's that's why it deserved it, even though I did really like this class. I still like it. Dazzling Charge, Heal 3, Range 3, Infuse an Element. Pretty standard. I'm going to be honest. Heal 3, range 3, infuse the element you need is a really standard card. So you love to see it. It gives you a heal, which is good. And the bottom still keeps the move 5. Great. Uh, but it's a loss. But it's a stun and infuse light at the end of it. Very good. Uh, again, you have plenty of losses that you can pull out these utility losses when you need it. So this is either a big move that stuns and gives you light, or it's a heal that gives you light. Regardless, you get light, and that's something you need. From we saw for those first two attacks, you need lots of it. Lay on hands. So no longer is there you suffer damage. Heal an ally equal to their maximum hit point value. Infuse light, get two experience, it's a loss. Just bring an ally back to full health, which is great. But instead, now we have an initiative 90, move four. Move four is great. Putting a move on the bottom of lay on hands makes it so much more playable. And not only that, but initiative 90 on a move four is huge and great. Obviously, we want a good move on a low initiative, but you're not going to get that very easily on the Sunkeeper, or you're going to have to burn a pick on it. Regardless, this is a great card. Tactical order. So this is still very similar to, hey, grant the ally a big move, which is great. I mean, that's kind of what you want anyway. But also the bottom is a move three or a move five at initiative 29, which is you're not going to see too much better than that. But uh, it's pretty solid. I think we have a 23 and I think we have another one that's good in there too. You're hurting for early initiative undercut. So ultimately, though, this is just a versatile, versatile thing. If you do want to use the light for movement, you actually have access to a move five now, which is great. Brilliant prayer. This is another thing where I was talking about like the Tinkerer and other things. This allows you to trade a loss for a loss. An adjacent ally gets one of their loss cards back. You lose Brilliant Prayer. Um, pretty good between turns, but um, this is just very strong when you're in between those like uh, rooms and or like, hey, I have an 11 hand class. You get a card back. I can afford the loss. You need to get this back like a niner. Um, this is really strong. Of course, I wouldn't say that's a good thing. That's very situational. So what's the bottom look like? I always say that. First off, 27 initiatives, pretty strong on a card for a class that suffers it. But now it's a move to bless an ally. Move to bless an ally just feels really good. Does give you an earlier initiative, earlier for Sunkeeper, and still gives you bless. That's very strong. Obviously, we'd like strengthen on a bottom, but hey, you can't have everything. Regardless, it's very good. Soothing Light. So this is kind of like the opposite of Dazzling Charge in that this one doesn't give you light. It consumes light, but it does allow you to heal three at range two. And if you have light, they also get a card back from their discard pile. But not, and, and you're like, oh, but it's a level one card. It doesn't matter. Giving people free level one cards is still good. There's still some really strong level one cards out there. Cragheart would love to hear you to do this for them. And also, the other half of this is a move four. The initiative 63 isn't great, but um, this is pretty strong if you can get light. And you, I think infusing light is way easier if you are playing a support role. Because you can say, I'm going to heal you, and here's light. I'm going to heal you again, get a card back. You can play support really strongly now. Purifying Aura. The next five attacks targeting you, performed by an adjacent enemy, gain attack three. So you're getting Mega Retaliate for the next three attacks, getting three experience over the course of this, punching back, that's just really good. That's really good. So like, of course it's a loss, but being, this is effectively 15 points of Retaliate. That's, 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 that's really strong. Of course you have to set this up, but like with a top action, but it's, if you want to get tanky, if you want to like beat enemies down that like, oh, they, maybe they have a shield. Congratulations. Listen to that. Of course it's not a range two, which is, would be really cool. But even then melee retaliate still really strong. But the bottom on the other hand is 
all adjacent allies uh, get strengthened. But with light, you can increase the aura. But being able to give everyone strengthen that's adjacent to you is significant. Not only that, but a 21 initiative is really hard to beat too. So especially for this class. So um, we love to see it. Protective Blessing, here's your 16. So not quite, I wanted it to be 15 or 14, but you know, you can't have everything. The top is one experience and shield self, which isn't bad. It does mean that, you know, for this turn, you're not doing anything, you're just shielding up. But um, I kind of wish it was better than that. Some people are like, but like the Bruiser's got a better one. With yeah, I know, I know. But this one, uh, like this is like a, a higher class and has other synergies with it. So you kind of deal with the fact that it only has a shield one. Plus it has a, a bunch of other stuff that's stacked with it. But the bottom, on the other hand, is whenever you or an ally suffer damage this round, negate the damage, infuse light, gain two experience. Damage immunity for one round. That's super huge. Um, now, I, I, I still want to address... 11 hand size class means you can afford to burn losses. Also, it does mean your non loss cards are not going to be strong. It does mean that, the, in general, the Sunkeeper should have been weaker than the Bruiser or the Brute for like first edition. So, the fact that the Brute was weaker than the Sunkeeper, now the Bruiser, sometimes its actions feel a little stronger, is more appropriate to their hand sizes. So, we're going to focus a little bit on that. Trust me when I say the Sunkeeper still feels really strong defensive stance uh so let's talk about the bottom it's better and it's worse the worst part that everyone's gonna notice is that shield no longer has a pip on it if you are surprised by this don't be you shouldn't be surprised you should have known that was coming you saw what the banner spear got but this one also has minus one to all move abilities which is not new but also uh pierce abilities targeting you have their pierce dropped by two but now you have pierce resistance pierce values against you drop by two which reducing the pierce value of things by two that's like hey i'm gonna stack up shields and like congratulations the enemy is pierced no no this is a lot of resistance in addition most of the pierce attacks that we see are around two but there are some threes but it just gives you some resistance to them so at least hey a pierce three attack doesn't break your shield three so now if you have a shield three it's only going to be a shield two whoop de doo anyway that pierce resistance is huge but the top here's the thing if you want to take play that bottom for that shield of course, it's a loss, but now you have to give up the top. The top, which is a just a weaker version of the old uh, Holy Strike, but now it's an attack one stun. Attack one stun is perfectly fine in this edition. It's, it's very similar to the stun shot the, the Tinkerer gets. The Tinkerer doesn't get an attack at all, but it's a range three. This one's a melee one, melee range, but you at least get to do one attack plus potentially some of your other modifiers, which can be interacting cool with your perks. Daybreak. Uh, so first off, attack, move, initiative 17, fantastic. Move three, all attacks targeting you have disadvantage this round. That's great, because if you're going tanky build, they can now give them disadvantage. But the attack three, but then you can turn dark into light, gain an experience and muddle the opponent and get plus. This is huge, but you need some way to get dark. So, you know, for like the RPG, there's really cool ways to build around it. But just for Gloomhaven, you need to have an ally or an enemy who does it. So you're not going to use it all the time. But the bottom's pretty useful for a lot of builds anyway, if you're going to be taking hits. So if you're leading, leaning into leader or leaning into defender, that bottom is actually really good. On your next three, single target heal from ability cards. Also target all your allies within uh, range two of the primary target and gain experience on the first and third. Obviously, it's a loss, but now you, this is really good for large groups. If you're like, hey, I'm going to do a heal three, heal three aura, heal everyone, heal myself, heal everything around it. That's huge. This can add up to an incredible amount of uh, burst healing, which can be huge if you're all about to die. Um, so that's really, this is just a really strong, but it is situational and it may not be good in two player, but it may be good enough. But the bottom on the other hand is a move three and then if you uh, consume light, you can turn that into a ward on an ally within range two, which is huge because ward can block a couple damage. So move three and potentially block a couple damage is significant, which we love. And it pairs really well with Sanctify. On the next three attacks that allies within range uh, perform, they get plus one to the attack. Unless they're warded, in which case they have plus two to the attack. So if you ward them with this, 
congratulations. Now they get potentially higher attacks. So this allows you to have an aura of, this reminds me of like, like the, you know, those, those auras from the Paladin from back in Diablo 2. So this is great. But also this gives you light when you put this aura into play, which is great. And if you don't like it, the bottom is a, an attack two muddle at range three. Ah, oh, which is fantastic. So if you're going more of a support role, Sanctify and Beacon of Light can do a lot of work for you, which we love. So we can actually look at the Sunkeeper perks now, which I'm really excited about. So first off, I want to comment on the fact that the Sunkeeper perks before were kind of a little boring, but mathematically really great because you could clear out a lot of negatives, get a lot of positives, and ultimately with advantage, you basically always were attacking with positive things, but there were a lot of the parts of the Sunkeeper perks that were lacking pizzazz and fun. And guess what? We've got it now. The, the first perk you can pick is replacing minus ones with plus zeros, which is bad, but you get two of them, and it's plus zeros infused light. Given how much light dependency and the fact that you have a little bit of a struggle keeping that up, especially if you're like trying to go more of a striker build for some of those damaging effects, because most of the damaging attacks don't infuse light, but in fact consume it, this actually really helps first off balance out the negatives and also gives you light, which you use for so much more than just one, because they usually are one attack, one experience experience and another effect as well and often advantage it's just so good so obviously this is not only a better perk but it's it does even out the damage to be a little bit more consistent but it does give you more light generation which is what you need and the next one is kind of interesting because I'm first off it drops zeros with rollings which removes the amount of terminal cards you have which means that the positive and modifiers that you have remaining left over will be drawn more often or the negatives if you haven't thinned it out so I do suggest taking this a little bit later but it does give you a rolling shield for Mega Man X fans, you know that this is good against Launch Octopus. But uh, this gives you a rolling shield oneself and plus one. So uh, although it does give you less terminal cards, the overall damage is just really strong because removing plus zeros helps you once you've kind of uh, optimized your deck anyway. And even though rolling shields may not necessarily be the greatest it does still give you a rolling plus one so even if you don't need the shield which in many cases you might end up having it pay off because many sun keepers are going to take the hits uh this still has the benefit of at least allowing your attack to do more damage which we all love Replacing two plus zeros with two plus twos is really great because of advantage. You're going to hit now some of those possible three plus twos in your deck more reliably. There's not much else to say about this. It's a kind of boring perk, but it's very beneficial given your toolkit. And then there's a couple of adding two plus ones, but also perform a heal one at range three. This is neat because it's almost like adding another plus two, but in general, adding a plus one and adding another heal usually equates to more because sometimes people just need a little bit more of a health buff. And um, although we absolutely love adding plus twos, this one gives you much more in your deck because you can stack it with four plus ones that also pop a heal, but these heals can remove wounds and poisons and stuff and can do a little bit more than just your standard thing. Plus, especially because you're going to be a little bit more defensive or support in general, uh, keeping yourself alive probably goes a little bit more than damage. For some of the more straight um for some builds leaning more into striker, this is probably not going to be as appealing. And then a very interesting one, add a negative one, but allows you or an adjacent ally to recover a card. Now, of course, this card must be a level one card. It has to be in a discard pile, but it really helps out stamina. And you have plenty of good level one cards, You, especially because your hand size and the amount you have. You have a lot of options here that are really good. It does overall decrease damage, but overall increases longevity. It depends on how much you value that, especially because you do have a lot of valuable attacks, that, or even not just attacks, but abilities. This is one of those cards that you can help add some utility, something you find important, and bring a little bit more. But you do have to draw this, and it does actually penalize your damage. So it has the benefit of a potentially random and very powerful stamina potion at the cost of damage. Again, strikers probably aren't going to lean into this, but some other builds that don't care as much, especially because leader and defender builds are so viable for the Sunkeeper, this is not a bad pick for either of them. As a matter of fact, it's probably really good. Add a rolling stun. Um, it's perfectly fine. Uh, we had these before, but this is still strong. Um, but I consider it lower priority other than, you know, having damage optimization. 
If you are going for more of a support build, it's probably going to do more because it, chances are if you're going striker, you just want to kill them and stunt. Dead enemies don't need to be stunned. Ignore scenario effects and add a plus one card. Really strong. Helps uh, increase damage a little bit. Adding plus ones are not... I usually prefer... It's fine. You want to remove, ignore scenario effects. That's simply put. Ignore negative item effects and remove a minus one card. Uh, mandatory first perk, basically. I think some strikers may not, but I think if you're going leader or defender, especially defender, this allows you to equip those heavier, like, self-shield stuff while also just, you know, removing a minus one. It's just an easy pick. So now we're getting into the really fun perks. So first off, whenever you, whenever you open a door, gain shield one, retaliate one for that round. This gives you like the designated door kicker in, but you're one of the best classes to be doing that because you have a better toolkit for it. And now you have yet another toolkit that you kick in the door. Not only you can potentially get other shields from other sources uh, because you have a variety of ways of getting that, you are now making yourself more resilient. And on the cases that enemies do hit you, you're going to retaliate a little bit on them. And this doesn't come with the cost of stamina or anything. This simply says, if you open the door, you get this for free every time it happens. Again, it really depends on the role you have in your party, but given that, I'd have to say the Sunkeeper is a really good door opener for most parties, this ends up being an incredibly valuable perk. Now, sometimes when you do say like, hey, I'm going to be removing some minus ones or blah, sometimes the way you like draw them, you won't get them. This one is something you can control reliably and get the benefit of it every scenario if you wanted obviously like hey what about the scenarios of no doors they're so uncommon that you're, you're probably less likely than like you know like adding a plus two and not drawing it is much less common than actually you know getting a scenario without doors they exist yeah but they're definitely uncommon but the fact that doors become such a pivotal part of it this becomes huge especially the fact that the fact that when you open a door things tend to go south real fast this helps mitigate that reliably you don't even there's no chance to it it just happens so very good very good perk whenever you long rest infuse light um boring and incredibly good uh one of the problems i've had with the sun keeper in first edition especially when i went more my striker build is i'd rest then I'd want to run up in there and do some attack that infused light, and then I'd get my tempo. This allows you to start with a spender instead of an infuser. As a result, you start your damage temp, your up tempo early rather than down. So this one really gives you more of that momentum. It's probably not as useful for useful for some people that aren't going to be like even then the leader likes it, but it's it's a generally useful perk no matter what your build. But I think the striker likes it just because of the tempo it gives, because you just want to constantly be infuse light, spend it, slap it down. As infuse light, spend it, slap it down. You want to be doing as much damage as possible. So starting like losing the setup turn, which is never a bad turn. You can still have good of those. Good, you can still have good setup turns to infuse light, but just skipping it and going right into the hammer phase, like, die! Strikers love it. It's a good perk. And now one of my favorite ones. This, this last perk is just something I love because it really makes the leader build so much more viable. And something I usually didn't like about heals is often, like, you have to be reactive or sometimes, like, um... Uh, sorry your health is so low like you have a three health but i have a heal four like sometimes it's just your overhealing is just a thing or if you're like hey everyone heal this amount like well i'm at full okay well you know it, it starts some of these powers start to diminish this one says whenever you overheal effectively you give them ward and ward to me to me ward usually just means two usually it usually soaks two damage once you get later in the campaign three is pretty common too and if your name's conrad it just means it's one uh but this really is really it's just it's so strong because in those downturns we're like hey uh we can't do anything you can give out ward on like anything like any of your heals can just give ward now if people are full and if people aren't at full you can just heal them but if people are like if your heal does more than their health boom ward it's it's just free ward all the time 
And this adds up to such amount of, now it's not free ward, you actually have to do it, but it adds up to such a significant amount of damage mitigation if you go into that. That makes the leader or healer, Sunkeeper, so viable that it makes the party, you can play notably more re recklessly. You can say, you know what, screw this, I'm gonna do the top bottom attack, let me take hits, because I know this person's gonna bail me out, because they can do it reliably. Or like, I'm going into the next room with ward, and we don't care, because at least the first cat sat, uh, at least the first attack is going to be softened. Like, it's so strong. Of course, strikers look at this and go, pass. But this is, for the right build, insane. And for the other builds, it's a pass. It's just really good because this allows you to, like, specialize your Sun Keeper. And we love that. As much as I'd love to talk about the rest of the Sun Keeper, we haven't revealed those yet. So stay tuned for the updates. But we are going to be talking about the Berserker now. So the Berserker, one of the biggest things, as people see, the hand size has been dropped from 10 to 9. And it kind of, that's a fair balance. Because um, some classes, especially we've got some of the Niners that got moved up, I think there was the desire to rebalance to make sure we still had plenty of those Niners. Like, you know, the Silent Knife is one. But also, they wanted to keep some of the others that they buffed. So the Berserker brought down to 9, but it kind of already has all of its non-loss cards play feel pretty strong, and it does feel like all of its losses are impactful. So let's just get into the cards. Numb the Pain. Inish 9, good, but heal, move 3, heal oneself. Heal, move 3, heal oneself isn't as strong as some of the other classes. So, but this one definitely needs some heals. And sometimes... Being able to pop wound and uh, poison off of yourself while still moving, as well as doing it on initiative 9, adds up a lot. Plus, you have a lot of self-damage, so healing is just more valuable for you. Additionally, so the top is a retaliate. You're going to notice that this the Berserker can actually retaliate pretty hard this time, and that's something we like. So, but guess what it does? Uh, retaliate 2 for the round, which isn't too exceptional we've already seen that in another starter but whenever you suffer damage this round if you're like at or below half health drop the damage incoming damage by one which can add up to a lot if you're like tanking a lot of like things or maybe even if you're hurt and like walk through a trap there's a lot of things that this can eventually uh, chip away the damage of give you a little bit of uh, damage prevention while still punching out retaliate damage this adds up to more than anticipated and it is pretty nice of course you have to be on the lower end of health but you do have a large health pool, so it's workaroundable. Ultimately, though, uh, Retaliate 2 self is generally the pretty standard uh, level 1 top action anyway. So you can potentially you can potentially punch some damage out. And then you can recover from it. Shiny Distraction. First off, Shield 1 self is great. You're like, hey, the Sun Keeper just got... We saw them. They, they got Shield 1 self with nothing. And this is a, this one is a loot built into it. Again, you're a 9 class. They're an 11 class. You're... you're non-loss actions are going to be better than theirs but loot self is only slightly better than shield oneself but it's still a pretty good card on the other hand the bottom infused fire all of your attacks have advantage this round and all attacks of targeting you have disadvantage this round which is huge um that that's this is just such a good card but again get used to being a nine hand class because this is the, your all of your cards are going to feel like you they are adding impact Plus, if you see things, you are going to need fire for things, which is really good. Strength and Agony. Attack 3, unless your health is half or less. In which case, attack 5 and gain an experience. That's just really good. Initiative 37 is workable. Uh, but it's a move 4. But it's also a move 4 or move 7. You can take up to 3 damage to move more. Non-loss move 7 is huge. Of course, you take 3 damage, but you can recover from it. But move 7, just having the option there. Worst case scenario, it's just a move 4, which I've been... On my other previews, I'm like, hey, move four is good. But instead of being a move four, this is a move four, plus potentially more when you need it. And you can pick how much damage you take, so it gives you that much measure of control. Very good. Defiance of Death. So this one is another way you can self-damage. Attack three or suffer two damage and attack five. If you do that, you also get an experience. This class now has a couple very easily controllable attack fives. Uh, very similar to how the Scoundrel has some pretty easily set up attack fives, which are very similar to how the Silent Knife has some very easily set up attack fives. It's almost like they're, it's almost like they're both nine size, nine hand size classes. But the bottom is no longer I'm immune to death for a bunch of rounds, but it is the next time you would die, don't die. Gain an experience, and it's non-loss now. Of course, it's only one, but like one charge of the next time I die, don't. 
and it lasts doesn't like there's plenty of times where I could the next time you would blow this round. No, you can leave this in play until you eventually drop, then save it, and then move on. Ah, so good. Mm. Resolute stand. First off, initiative 10, move four. Yeah, we like it. But also, uh, attack, retaliate two. And the next time you retaliate this round, uh, he, the next time you retaliate this round, get an experience. But also, if you have fire, you heal yourself in the process of this. So you heal to self, retaliate to. This is allows you to at least have some recovery. Now, you might not, if you are doing a full retaliate build, you're probably also not doing the I'm going to take a crap ton of damage build. So if you're like, oh, these kind of, don't worry, you have, you have, options and you can kind of hybrid and like play for the scenario because like uh even if you're like uh not going into the high the even if you're not going into really retaliate initial 10 move four is going to be good for you anyway so but you might need that self-heal anyway if you got fire so it's a toolkit blood pact suffer damage equal to half your current hit point value initiative 76 sucks but attack six gain an experience now the funny part is sometimes if you're like we're just really hurt anyway this just you know, take just very little damage doing attack six. I know it sounds like a, a clown card to some people to take half your damage. This adds up. This just, it does so well. Uh, attack six, it's fun. Plus, you know, you got a diamond pip on it. So that's fun. Uh, and the bottom is very familiar. At the start of your turns, if your current hit point value is greater than one, take a damage. So take a damage every turn, but then plus one to all your attacks. Mm -mm -mm. Makes it really easy to drop below half health, doesn't it? Ugh. I love this card. <laughs> I just love Blood Pact. It's one of my favorite cards. I'm so glad that they didn't, like, touch it. Cotter Eyes. So the bottom, we're just going to talk about the bottom for a second. Um, you can potentially immobilize a wound in an adjacent enemy, which is huge. You know, it costs two damage, but that's fine. But then you also move three, which is fine. This is a pretty solid card um, just there. Suffering two damage might not be great, but if you are adjacent to a melee enemy, you can say, screw you, you're immobilized and wounded, you're not doing anything this turn. Especially if they're like two health, you could potentially just say, you're dead, bye. And the top is nice. Um, the, the top is a very nice infuse fire and wound an enemy at range three, which is great. You also attack one on them. But also if your health is low, you got to do, do that to a second target. Whew. We love this. Also, this does give you non-loss fire, which is something you need to get those other fire cards out. Dazing Wound. Hey, you know what that is? That's a heal. Yeah, you're, you can kind of be support, but chances are you're healing yourself. But a heal three on bottom, very good. But this, the trade-off here is that is your non-loss stun. Of course, you're like, but I suffer two damage. There's plenty of times where stunning an enemy is going to add up to more. Especially like, oh, crap, that thing's summoning. No, it's not attack three stun. <laughs> I did a bunch of damage to it, and now it's stunned. And now I'm going to beat the crap out of it next round. We just love this card. The initiative 29 is fine. Unbridled power. Uh, so we love this bottom. Move three. Retaliate oneself. And initiative 14, which is like basically the goal number. And then gain an experience the next time you retaliate this round. This one, oh, that's so good because you can pair it with other retaliates and just like punch the crap out of like enemies that hit you. But even then the attack, the bot top is an attack three at range two. Or attack The top is an attack three push two, which is slightly weak. But if you consume fire, you can hit an enemy that's not immediately adjacent to you and you attack four. Attack four, push two, target an enemy within range two. You can potentially like knock things away. Reach things that are far away, knock them away, knock them into traps. Potentially maybe if they don't have a big move, move them uh, a distance away. Regardless, the initiative 14s are pretty good for that attack anyway. And it pairs well with its bottom if you do want to build a retaliate build worst case scenario move three initiative 14 is also strong although you do have a, a niche 10 move four so uh you generally want to want to use it for either the push effect or for the retaliate because you actually have really good you just have good cards that's really what it comes down to for the berserker just being able to pair this and be able to very easily get attack threes or be able to like uh retaliate or like retaliate threes or like i love this like retaliate three and then all damage is reduced by one pretty easy to pull off to be fair from the brink remove all your negative conditions great if you are at one health recover a lost card insane gain strengthen incredible heal equal to half of your maximum health that's a big heal and then infuse fire and gain two experience that is a lot 
on two one card. It's, like, it's a loss. It is a very pushed loss. This is a very powerful. Card. Of course, you're like, well, it's all recovery. It's all recovery, but babe, it does so much. Like, this this does so much on it. Yeah, but you're like, okay, so that's conditional. You may not need it. So then, if it is conditional, it better have a good reusable bottom, right? Move three, push range two. Ah, just super useful. Now, the push at range two is interesting, but it is only a push one. So things like basically need to be near hazardous terrain or in a trap. But also the fact it doesn't need to be adjacent. You could potentially push things that aren't immediately adjacent to you, push it further away, and maybe they don't even get to attack you. So, but it's it's got a pretty, this is a pretty decent toolkit. I do think that because you do have better options that are more reliable on bottom, that it's probably not going to be brought by everyone, but hey, this is probably why it's an X card. But that is a that loss is one of the highest impact losses in the game if you use it in a time where you just need to come back from the brink. It's in the name. Glass Hammer's back! Uh, the initiative's now 43, but jump three. Hey, jump three is really hard. It also gives you a jump, which is something you don't have on the other cards. But even then, jump, jump three is nice. But then, as expected, attack X, where X is your current hit point value. Um, you get an experience for every uh, five damage it does, and then set your hit point value to one, and it's a loss. Obviously, for people who are, saw Glass Hammer in first edition, like, <laughs> how, how did you not know? It's fine. It's fine. It's just more fun. I know this could actually do a crap ton of damage, but it's worth it. It's it's too fun to get rid of. That's what it matters. Use this with a multi attack and just like obliterate two elites. That's great. Chances are you're probably using that on a boss though. Growing rage. So this one's primarily going to be focused on hey retaliating. Uh, it's a loss. So like people are like oh no. Whenever you retaliate, heal oneself. Okay, that's big. If after the heal your cur if after the heal your current value is still like below half health, perform it again. So you retaliate, heal two, retaliate. Oh, now of course we're like, what if I retaliate from this source to this source and this source? No, retaliate is stacked on top of each other. So if you're, you have retaliate four from like three sources, you don't retaliate three times, you retaliate four once. But every attack that lands on you, you can potentially trigger this for the rest of the scenario. This can just, that adds up to so much health self-healing. That is so much. Of course you're like, but, for it to actually pay off, you're going to need to like retaliate on six, seven different attacks for it to even be worth a loss. Probably more because you're a nine hand size. Yeah. Get in the thick of it, babe. Get Put in all those retaliates as often as possible. Uh, put them back up. Just make the enemies hit you. You're going to want the enemies to hit you. So you have the Berserker build that's like, I'm going to take damage and stun the enemy. Here's take attack five. Here's another attack five. By the way, I'm going to plus one to all my attacks. And then you have the other ones. It's like, cool, I'm going to heal myself. I'm going to like retaliate you, retaliate you. You hit me again. Guess what? Even though you guys hit me four times, I did heal seven this turn. So good luck killing me. Now I'm going to keep badgering the crap out of you. It's amazing. We love this class. Gr Growing Rage is built for... Growing Rage is built for the Retaliate build, and we love it. Or, I love it. I don't know. I, I just think it's fun. It's weird, because, like, Retaliate feels static and unreactive, but it really works in a fun way. So, uh, good job, D&D, &D, for designing this well. But, hey, the bottom is, move three, and then if you do... See, this is the thing. If you are doing more of a Striker build, move three, and then you gain an experience and perform an attack, too, if you're at or below half health. Also, really fun if you're doing with this Blood Pact, because that means that's a free attack three for you. If So, because with plus one on all the attacks. Like, I, I've literally seen where, like, someone is like, hey, I'm, I know I'm, like, at four health, but here, uh, I'm going to move three, uh, attack three, attack six. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, this, this Berserker... <laughs> You, you feel it. But the, the, despite the fact you have these numbers, dropping the hand size from 10 to 9 is significant. So that's pretty cool. Also, the perks are really cool. A lot of times at Origins, people got to play these characters and they tried to like use it. You know, it was in the RPG setting, so we didn't get to see the full thing. But there was one character who's like, wait, this is my favorite. Berserker is my favorite class. And they got to look through the cards like, oh my god, this is, are, they, are these like the... And I had to like, look because I'm like, there's the RPG cards that we had available for the Berserker was only one card was different and that was one top half of the card the bottom half was untouched 
and then um, uh, the experience is removed for all of them. So seeing a person whose favorite class is Berserker and then seeing the new Berserker, I was a little worried because like, oh no, the hand size reduced and like the toolkit slightly different, but some of the cards should look familiar. He was super enthused. Oh, can I take pictures? And I'm like, please do. I'm so glad you're happy because so few people are actually talking about the new Berserker. And I'm like, why? Anyway, I'm just really enthused about it and I hope you are too. So, uh, although, like, clearly the Sun Keeper has more, like, variety of builds, because you can kind of go full Defender, you've got Striker options now, you have Leader options, uh, not so much on Control, but you have a little bit of it there, but the Berserker kind of has more of a Defender option now, you clearly have the Striker option available, which sounds, like, really familiar before, but it doesn't have as much, it has a tiny bit of Control, but, um, yeah, when it comes from its Leader, it's just, like, it's, it's, it's gonna be Defending, so, uh, fully, really happy about these too so i hope you really like these cards too so if you do like these two please let us know what's your favorite card to which class do you like more uh how do you feel about the and how do you feel about the revisions for these or do, do you like them are you feeling do you like them are you feeling like some of them was a bit too hard of a nerf or maybe hey what about the buffs and i, I and i say nerfs and i say nerfs because i fully believe that overall both of these classes have a reduced potential to their first edition version and I think that's good but I also think all their options and builds are better so I want to hear your thoughts I hope you enjoy it and I hope you enjoyed this video uh, remember to hit like that really does help and stuff I think I'm supposed to say stuff here but I yeah just leave a comment like subscribe I know I'm supposed to say that and I, I, I try to do a segment at the start of every video. But yeah, so yeah, thank you. And thank all of my patrons. You guys are amazing. I really appreciate everything you guys do. I hope, I'm glad, I'm glad my work is appreciated because uh, this is just like something that's really important to me. So I'm glad you like it. So thank you so much. Thank you for your support. You're amazing. And thanks all of you for watching.